other speaker, it wasn't on the agenda, but we'll put him on there. Next we have Bob Wallace, who is the, uh, you, uh, are you a state rep or, I can't remember what you, commander of, uh, DFW Okay, a oh boy, well, he's, a, he's a Purple Heart uh, member too. He wants to say a few things about the Purple Heart organization. Okay, thank you. Uh, and thank you from the Purple Heart for putting on such a beautiful day. Going good so far, we might end up purple. My uh, deal here is this hat was left down at the Falkirk VFW. Is anybody in the area uh, from the Falkirk area? Do they know who was a life member that uh, got the Korean War emblem on him? I'm trying to track down the owner of this hat. So down in Falkirk, if you happen to go around and find this guy, it'll be at Chapter 550 out of Beauclair. What's our new P.O. box, uh, Joe? Our 821. 821 yep. uh, Chippewa Falls. The next uh, item I have is I was uh, going through different stuff to honor the four soldiers that were killed from the Stanley Boyd High School. I didn't, uh, I walked down to the monument at Sioux Park in Stanley. The four names were on there and I wanted to do something different. The high school gave the veterans, uh, VFW and the Legion, a uh, commemorative uh, case, showcase, about the size of that Vietnam Veterans of America. It's in the high school as you walk in to your left. I went and uh, put together a plaque of each one that was killed. Uh, it took me two months to track down uh, the bodies pictures. A lady called me from uh, northern Minnesota. It was her brother that got killed. And I had another guy from New Jersey call me. And he had a picture of one of the guys that got killed. And I made uh, four pictures, five, uh, five by seven, and I placed them in that showcase and in the public walk around and see that, they are really, I get thanks all the time from this. And uh, I was thinking, maybe other veterans organizations could do that uh, too, to show the young kids that these four people gave up their life for you. And what better place to start at is the high school. Uh, that's all I have to say. Out of curiosity, how many of you gentlemen are, the, are Purple Heart recipients? Raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. We have we have some membership applications in the back. I'll be sitting back there. I'm the adjutant and finance officer for uh, Chapter 550. He's involved in just about as many things as I am, so I'll probably keep it straight some days, right? Exactly. The last couple of weeks, him and I have been running around uh, quite a bit, going this way and that way, and sometimes we meet in the middle. So exactly. We got we got things done here. We're just about finished. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, uh, that takes us, I believe, to our, our keynote speaker today. And I'll just say a few words about him. Uh, mm -hmm. Lieutenant Colonel uh, Kern Morgan, U.S. Army, retired. Um, he has 30 years of leadership, management, and teaching experience. 
and it, it, along with it, extensive travel throughout the United States and conducting a variety of supervisor and manager workshops for the United States Army. His employment history includes full-time faculty member for, uh, at the Wisconsin Indian Head Technical College, I believe it was Rice Lake, is that correct? Rice Lake, okay, yeah. from 90, 1996 to 2008. Um, he retired from the United States Army with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in 1995. His last assignment was with the command staff of the 88th Regional Command in Fort Snelling, Minnesota. Uh, and from 1985 to mid-1995, excuse me, he served as a department and branch chief for key components of the Army's Readiness and Training Center at Fort McCoy, Wisconsin. Then again, from 74 to 84, he was senior administrator at Mount Sonero College in Ladysmith, which I believe you currently live in Ladysmith, if I remember correctly. Uh, his initial tour of active duty was from 1966 to 1971, with service in Vietnam, Germany, and stateside at Fort Carson, Colorado. He has a BS in engineering from West Point in 1966, Masters of Science in Counseling from the University of Wisconsin Stout, in 1972. He uh, completed all his coursework for a PhD um, from New Mexico State University in 1974. Uh, his professional training associates, associations include the Airborne and Ranger School graduate, the uh, Special Weapons Training and Explosive Ordnance Training, Command and General Staff uh, College graduate, uh, Vietnam combat veteran. He's a 100% uh, service-connected disability rating by the Veterans Administration. Um, he's awarded, uh, let's see here once, two bronze stars, a purple heart, and uh, half a dozen or more others too. But I, I, they're not on here, so I'm not going to bother to mention them. So he can do it if he'd like. So at this time, would you please welcome our keynote speaker, Colonel Morgan. Kern's going to surprise us with his comments. I think he said it was going to be contemporary comments that everybody can get along with today and learn something from, right? Well, first of all, thank you, Leroy. I have no idea where you found all that out about me, but... Uh, Take see. Oh, okay. Now oh, I know. Well, first of all, I, I am honored to be your speaker today. I do want to say that the people that have spoken before me truly makes whatever remarks I make somewhat uh, humble, I guess the word would be. Thank you, sir. And particularly the lady from the Gold Star Mothers. That was a moving and emotional and uh, truly uh, moving experience to listen to you speak. <clears throat> now, when uh, Leroy first got a hold of me asking me to speak, I did give this a lot of attention. And what I came up with then was my outline for today's talk. It's probably 15, 16 pages, and uh, I guess I have 45 minutes here on the cover of So uh, you guys, uh, are there any first sergeants out there? Uh oh, okay. Well, the first sergeant gave me that look like, uh, you better be changing that script. And so I did, and here's my presentation. <laughs> so, uh, first off, if you stop and think about it, Eau Claire is the center of the political universe today. <laughs> I'm not going to promise you a wall between Chippewa Falls and Rice Lake. <laughs> I'm not going to nuke Lake Halley. <laughs> by the way, I did spend some time with the Special Weapons Unit. And if Donald has any spare time, we need to talk about what a nuclear weapon does. Okay? Yeah, he's not got it kind of figured out. <clears throat> I'm not going to go ahead and give you uh, free taxes, no postcard tax, nor free education, nor free health care, and I'm not going to come to your house to check your internet email server. <clears throat> so that covers all the politicians. And I'm not going to do it. I would say it's, it's such a coincidence with Leroy's background in the septic system business. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this man will be in sole demand in this town by tonight. With these people in town, and you take it from there. BS. <laughs> Leroy said. Yeah. Not political comments. 
I want to walk through about five points. Um, important points to me, and hopefully they will be to you also. First off, people a lot of times ask me, uh, what happened to your hands? And if you were one of my grandkids, uh, I would try to tell them some story about setting up a claymore backwards or whatever the case may be. But all it is is a good 35 year case of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So hang with me there. I promise not to drop the mic. The, my uniform was picked specially for today. The jacket is a Vietnam era jacket that I guess has been hanging in the closet since about 1968. And then uh, my hat is a special hat that I got when my wife and I went out with the disaster assistance team to 9-11. And all I will share with you is the fact that it was still burning when we got there. And so that was a pretty important part of our life. What's the deal with this Vietnam Veteran Commemoration Day? Well, I guess commemorate means to remember. So walk down memory lane with me a little bit. I got to Vietnam on uh, 18th of April, 1968. Now, if you need help with translating on this one, I'm going to go back to the first sergeant. And when I stepped off that plane in uh, wherever we landed, uh, I had this uh, feeling about <coughs> whiskey, tango, foxtrot. <laughs> you guys heard it from there. Okay. <laughs> Probably 100 degrees. For my first night, as many of you, was spent in a bunker in the city of uh, Zeon. And all I can remember about that is we had about six inches of clearance from the next guy up. And I do remember that first night introduced to that uh, famous term, incoming. Because <laughs> it seems like we, we all heard that many, many times over. Now, there are a number of you uh, fellas who uh, earned the Purple Heart. Once again, as I mentioned, of somebody at club that none of us wanted to join, but we did. And there are probably many of others of you that have had very, very precarious situations in the combat zone. I will share with you, other than being wounded, my closest brush with death was in a foxhole with a flak jacket and a steel pot during monsoon. You guys with me? Want to take a guess on that one? <laughs> Whoever dug that foxhole to about five and a half foot depth, I never could track it down. But I, I just about didn't make it out of that foxhole. Mm -hmm. So those are the memories a couple of back, from back in that day. I do remember very clearly, and this is more of a very serious memory, my dad and brother on the front page of the Lady Smith News when a group of us were coming out of, a, out of the uh, War Zone C, Iron Triangle area, on a, <clears throat> a maneuver, they were both uh, proudly displayed leading the Vietnam War protest down the streets of Lady Smith. And the guys in the unit, all went up, they went all nuts over that. And they said, you know what, stop and think about it, lads. We're a free country. One of the reasons we're here is to try to promote that freedom, keep that freedom. And by the way, they're entitled to do that. And I don't know, did I get it right on that? I'm a, as I, uh, Leroy mentioned, I'm a, a teacher. I gotta ask my audience, would you share that opinion with me, uh, Sergeant Moore? Was I right on that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Anybody disagree on that? And I should have said, hey, those back in the back window. I'm sorry? One thing to protest, another thing to act in a form of freedom. Okay. <clears throat> My dad was a big guy, I'm glad you didn't meet him. <laughs> but uh, so it was, to me, that was a very uh, conflicting emotion for many, many years. Fast forward the tape to grad school in New Mexico in 1972. And I was fortunate enough to be the director of the Vietnam Veterans uh, Office there. I begged my 
fellow Vietnam vets to go to the American Legion and DFW meeting with me. And it was tough, as has been talked about much this morning and this afternoon. When we got to the DFW hall in Las Cruces, New Mexico, you figured we may as well have Ebola, you know, uh, lice, any other uh, scourge known to man, because I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, as a fact, there was not a single veteran in that Le Legion Hall that would talk to us. Now, why would I share that with you? Don't let it happen to us. Which is by virtue of saying, where are the young veterans today? Where are they here? There's a few. Oh. All right, great. Let's hear round of applause. <laughs> what we need to do, so guys and gals, is we need to continue to bring people like that to our regular meetings. We need to bring that younger crowd of Iraq, <coughs> Afghanistan, and uh, other veterans into the fold. <coughs> My son is a Iraq veteran. <coughs> My daughter-in-law is an Iraq Afghanistan veteran. Now I'm the pot calling the kettle black. They have never been to an organized veterans meeting. They're the millennials. They don't join. That's the challenge. Because if we don't figure it out, there'll come a time when Nero will be locking up shop. If we don't begin to recruit younger members in a more effective way. Let me jump forward now 10 years to 1982, and I verified with the spirit of knowledge back here, Dave, that this is a true story. I know Dennis was there, Dave was there, and I was there at the dedication of the Vietnam Vets Memorial. Were there others in the room that attended? Well, good for you guys. <clears throat> We're marching down Constitution Avenue in 1982, Vietnam Vets, led by Gary Wetzel, Medal of Honor.